Hello, everyone. Welcome back to String and Story. My name is Holly and Knight, and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Thank you for joining me again for take two of our Jubilee video for today's Tuesday mini workshop. Guys, I talked during the Free Motion Quilting Academy graduation on Saturday about um, the rock stars who graduated the way they showed themselves grace as they were working on Free Motion Quilting Academy through the challenge of COVID. And guys, right now I am in the camp of having to try to show myself grace and hoping that you will also show me grace. So um, as you are hopping back on, let me know if you can hear me. Um, for those of you who maybe weren't with me for the first broadcast, my sound went out. We're going to hope that it's fine this time for the whole time, but we will start at the top just so that if you weren't with me, then you get the whole presentation, which is pretty great. All right, let me pin this back to the top so that hopefully everyone can find it just fine and we'll get started. So guys, welcome back to Summer Stash Busting. I've kind of lost track of what week we're on. I think this is week six because we had our bonus week. So we're talking about fat apes this week. Oh, good. Glad to hear me, Renee. That's great. Very clever. Um, <laughs> I love it. So it's been an interesting morning. Found out yesterday schools are not going back as usual. Was prepping for this morning's live and Ian split his eyebrow open. That's still in progress. I'll keep you guys posted. Um, and so I have one block of the four that I was hoping to have. Originally, I was hoping for nine, uh, but my navy fabric did not come in, so I didn't have enough background. And then things got a little uh, thrown sideways with Ian's split eyebrow this morning. So we're showing ourselves grace, and we're going to look for the silver linings, um, because what else are we going to do, y'all? What else are we going to do? By the way, those of you who have commented on the post that I put up last night, thank you. I have not read all your comments yet, but I will be reading them all later. All right, let's dive into this. Let's just let's just go at it, guys, because what else are we going to do? Oh, I'm so glad you guys are joining me here. So welcome to Fat Eighth Week for our summer stash busting. This is Jubilee by Samantha Green. So let's take a look at this pattern and some possible quilting plans. In this mini workshop, we're gonna take a look at the Jubilee quilt and discuss how to make this simple and scrap friendly quilt truly sparkle. Jubilee by Samantha Green is written to use fat eights hiding in your stash, but is also remarkably stash friendly, scrap friendly. It would help if I could read my own slides. Uh, with the unique ability to make leftover bits of fabric really shine. And here's what I mean by that, guys. Um, first of all, a fat eighth is not a whole lot of fabric. Right, and so that means that if you've been using yard or even using fat quarters, you're pretty likely to have bits about that size left over. So you could use pre-cut fat eighths like these, the original fabric I was planning to use for this quilt. But then I just decided I like Alice in Glass a little bit better against this navy background. Um, so you could use pre-cut fat eighths, but this is also really an amazing scrap buster. And I'm gonna mention this again and again as we go through. Uh, but this is, I liked this quilt pattern a lot. Now, guys, you can find this pattern inside of Make Modern's Pretty Pre-Cut Special Edition. There's a link there. There's also a link inside today's blog post. Um, but if you have not yet bought a copy of Pretty Pre-Cuts, don't miss out. It's a really incredible collection of patterns. And y'all, I liked the patterns when we started Summer Stash Busting. But after having made so many of them and made them in my fabrics and my colors, I love these patterns. These are well-written patterns, well thought out. They're very useful. Um, and they really do a great job of using up pre-cut. So highly recommend you get your copy. It's an enormous bang for your buck. I think it's $10 Australian. So if you're here in the US, it's like eight bucks. And there's seven patterns in it. And I'm not usually one to like promote going for the bargain because sometimes, you know, when you get what you pay for, it's not so great. But in this case, these patterns high exceeded expectations. I had good expectations. I love Make Modern, love the designers that work with them. But this, I mean, this was far and away. I was blown away by how fabulous these patterns have been as we've worked through them this summer. So I highly recommend. Shameless plug, that is also an affiliate link. As we're going along, I'm going to be talking about um, some quilting plans for Jubilee. And just as a pro tip, print out the cover image from your edition of Make Modern and use it as your um, 
way to plan your quilting plan, right? If you've got the, you know, you'll get the digital edition. You literally can select to just print that page. It makes it so, so easy. Oh, I realize I don't have your comments up, guys. I want to make sure that I can see you guys. All right. Brilliant. I can see you. I can see you. Shift happens, Patricia. You're my kind of girl. I love it. We're just, we're going with the flow. We're going with the flow. Okay, so as I already mentioned, I love this pattern because it's scrap friendly. Now, if you have pretty pre-cuts, and especially if you've been piecing this quilt, you will recognize that I have simplified the piecing on this. I was using all solid navy for the background. So while the pattern is written for all of these background areas to be very scrappy, um, I pieced them in bigger chunks to save fabric and to save time. Um, and as it was, I barely had enough navy for the four blocks that I'm hoping to get done as soon as possible. Um, so sidebar, I will be updating images in the blog. So you'll get more eye candy if you pop back into the blog again later this week. Um, but that means that it works really well, not just for using up fat eighths or kind of leftover big chunks, but also leftover little chunks. So dive into your scrap user system, dive into the scrap bin, and I'll mention this again later, but guys, this pattern is wonderfully AccuQuilt friendly. I used my AccuQuilt to cut mine out, made it so fast, made it so easy, um, and yet again, this is a pattern that I looked at and was like, e, is this gonna be fiddly? And it was not fiddly at all. It's been really fun to piece. As far as quilting this, the strength of Jubilee is in this these large background areas. And I love me some good background, right? I love adding texture, just filling it up. And personally, I would leave these unquilted pretty much no matter what, these little firework bits. Y'all, I can feel myself getting nervous because this is where we lost sound last time. Um, but so you're gonna see that in the quilting plans that I'm sharing with you today. Okay, the nice thing as well is with how this pattern is written, even with my simplified version, you have plenty of ditches to travel in in order to stitch in the ditch around those to get a nice crisp look. Um, and it also would be very easy as you're filling in the background to just outline each one when you get to it. Okay, so you don't necessarily, um, I agree, Lydia, it can still be super scrappy, even like this. I and mean, you can see I did all these little bits quite scrappy as well. Um, Oh, it doesn't, so stitching in the ditch on this quilt, even though it looks like it would involve a lot of thread breaks, I don't think it needs to, especially if you're being pretty consistent in your thread use for the background. And we'll talk about thread more in just a second, all right? So first up, super simple, fill this in with a meander as you're coming to each section, stitch in the ditch around it, right? And y'all, I mentioned more about this on the blog, um, but you really could sub in any motif for this background. You can fill this up with swirls. You can fill this up with paisleys. I'm going to show you in a minute a little bit of what it would look like if you filled it up with graffiti quilting. Like this is an opportunity where you don't need a complicated quilting plan to get a really cool effect. And it's a really neat opportunity to practice a fill motif. The other thing you could consider doing is picking a few motifs. Um, if your background is consistent and you decide to use a matching thread, you honestly could pick a different fill motif for each block. And it would just be like a, like a little nine patch of different textures with these starbursts of color going through them, which would be really, really cool. So this could be a really neat practice piece for those of you who are still working through Free Motion Quilting Academy. Hey, Terry. Another option would be matchstick quilting. Now, y'all, I drew this matchstick quilting with the lines going through the fireworks um, because I'm not a masochist when it comes to drawing quilting plans. But I might be when it comes to quilting it, and I would seriously consider as like, and this would be actually torturous, I would seriously consider actually stitching in the ditch and not having the matchstick quilting go through. Um, that's totally up to you. I think it would look super cool either way, but this is definitely a quilt that would lend itself well to matchstick quilting. And that's coming from someone who's like, not a huge straight line quilter, definitely not a huge match, match stick quilter. Um, the original version of this quilt, you'll see Samantha's quilt pattern. She did half or um, straight lines about an inch apart going horizontally. So if you've got pretty pre-cuts and you can see that, I've drawn over it here so much that you can't see it. But you'll see that um, in the original image and that may be useful as well, okay? And then maximum texture. Now, admittedly, this was taking a minute to draw. See previous story about Ian's split eyebrows. So I did half of it, but it also gives you a neat idea 
um, of just what it adds to the quilt. You've got the contrast. Um, and it could be cool, even as I'm looking at this, to do um, graffiti quilting in the background like this, kind of just on a portion of the quilt and do matchstick quilting on the other portion. And that would be a really cool effect that I didn't actually draw out. But as I'm looking at it, I'm like, that would be wild. But this, again, is a great quilt to practice your background fill motifs as a free motion quilter and great candidate for doing graffiti quilting because these areas are a really good size. They're not too big, right? You could get this under your domestic and be like, all right, I'm going to do a block. Um, the throw size quilt to this is nine 18 inch blocks. This is a big block. Guys, I love me a big block, right? So it's big enough that you're quilting a real quilt, that you have lots of room to maneuver, but it's not overwhelming, okay? But again, you could scale this up. This would add up to be a bed-sized quilt really fast, and it'd be a very cool bed-sized quilt, okay? Now, if you're feeling bold, I do invite you to think about thread color on these. I'm actually just simply gonna toggle back. Um, for something like a simple fill, whether it's a meander or a swirl, who is it? Me. Ian, I'm on video, honey. Do you want to come say hi? We might get a visitor. Oh, you don't even have a shirt on. I'm glad you have pants on. Stay there, honey. Are you going to sit with me while I finish my video? Okay, come here. Here's, here's the little one who split his eyebrow this morning, guys. <laughs> All right, we're talking about this Jubilee quilt. The quilt block is back here, okay? So if you're using a simple fill, guys, something like swirls, a meander, um, this would be a really cool opportunity to use a variegated thread. Not, I mean, you could go pretty wild, but not necessarily a wild variegated thread, but something that pulls in some of the colors that you choose for your fireworks while also uh, blending in reasonably well with your background. Just something as a little extra jazz. Now, if you go with matchstick quilting, I would do a lot of this with threads that match or closely match your background, but it'd be really neat to every few lines throw in a really bright line of color that, again, coordinates with those fireworks. Um, I've seen this done at various quilts at QuiltCon, and it looks so cool. It's just a fun little pizzazz. And if you're feeling really adventurous on that, you could actually use a thicker thread as well, add some more texture, or add in a little bit of hand stitching. All right. <laughs> We've been training him. We've been training him to knock on doors, haven't we, Ian? Have you been learning how to knock? Yeah, that's a really important life skill. Yep. Hey, Mama. Mom, I didn't actually text you yet. Ian split his eyebrow this morning. Sorry you're finding out this way. <laughs> but I feel like I should explain. <laughs> So anyway, I would encourage you to think about how could you be adventurous with thread color on this quilt because there is so much negative space. Uh, there's just a lot of opportunity to play here. If you're going for the graffiti quilting, um, this would this would take a bold move, guys, okay? But some of you guys have seen my Aldebaran quilt that I quilted a couple of years ago. And that's a quilt that has aqua and navy and hot pink. And there's a little bit of gray. Orange was the other color. And I quilted the whole thing in hot pink. And on the aqua and the orange, it showed up a little bit. On the hot pink, it blended. And on the navy, it popped, right? And if you are in for some pop, you could think about getting really crazy with your thread colors on this and have it look really, really neat, all right? So there's some thoughts on thread color. <laughs> hey, Mom. It was ahead of Mom and Dad. She said hi to you. Hi, Mom and Dad. Are you okay, even though you fell? Yeah, you're going to be okay? Okay, good. <laughs> now, a note about my rebellious ways. <laughs> I feel like I've had this note in this slide deck for several weeks in a row now because there's always been something that I've been changing up. Okay, now here you can see, this gives you an idea of the other colors that I've chosen. Remember, I'm using all navy for my background. Um, so the four blocks that I'm almost done quilting are an orange, a yellow, a pink, and a burgundy. And hopefully I'll have those photos done for you soon because, guys, it's going to look so good. And I want you to be as excited about this quilt pattern as I am. Um, but what I did that was the rebellious thing this time is in addition to simplifying this piecing a little bit since I was using a solid color, is I used my AccuQuilt. And, guys, this is such an AccuQuilt friendly quilt that if you have that Ready, Set, Go kit that I mentioned, that starter set, 
It's the one that I have. It's the one that I linked in last week's blog. Um, and it's linked again this week in this blog. It, if you have that set, or if you're like, I've been looking for an excuse to add an AccuQuilt to my repertoire, this is an awesome quilt pattern to get a lot of mileage out of it. Now, what that also means, though, guys, is if you have leftover um, pre-cuts from earlier summer stash busting quilts, this is a very pre-cut friendly quilt and not just for fat eights, but for other sizes as well. And keep that in mind. All right. Again, when you look at the pattern, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh so much yes all right as a sidebar thank you so much to the many 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 of you who entered last week's giveaway emily and i'll be looking at those entries in the next day or two and we'll be announcing the winner by the end of the week all right guys any questions and if you are excited about making jubilee will you tap the heart for me on this oh marianne i'm so glad that you jumped in so what questions can i answer for you about jubilee about fat eights, about these quilting plans. I am here for it. And while those questions are coming through, I wanna go ahead and let you know, I mentioned this at the beginning. If you need a confidence boost for your free motion quilting, if you want to try to free motion quilt this, even if, with something as simple as a meander, it's really empowering and exciting to be able to finish your own quilts, and I want to help you get started. So you'll find a link in the caption of this video, but there's also this URL here, stringandstory.com forward slash FMQ top tips. Both links go to the same place. I just realized that I put a different link in the caption of this video, but it ends up at the same place. Um, and this is a free guide with some top tips to get you started free motion quilting successfully. Some best practices, some troubleshooting for common questions that I get. And if you've not downloaded this guide yet, I would love, love, love to send it to you. So you can go to stringandstory.com forward slash FMQ top tips and you will find it there. All right. Now let me go ahead and pop back over here. I'm going to hide this. Hello, everyone. Guys, special thanks to those of you who are with me on the first stream and had to jump back on because of our sound issue. I'm glad that that seems to have resolved itself. Um, I don't see any questions coming in right now, but this is a super fun quilt pattern. And as I add more photos to the blog, as I get caught up on my piecing after this morning's uh, hoopla, then I will make sure that I update those photos in the blog and I will let you know about it. Because guys, like I said, this is yet another week that I have been just pleasantly um, surprised by the over delivery of these quilt patterns inside Pretty Precut. So well done, Make Modern, and well done to all these designers. They really did a fabulous job. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for being part of summer uh, stash busting. Oh, Patricia, let's see. Um, bold sounds interesting. If I don't like it, it's not like I don't have more fabric to try again. Patricia, this is a great attitude. And here's another thing, guys. Patricia, I'm so glad you worded that this way because I mentioned in passing that this is an 18-inch block. Guys, an 18-inch block is a great table topper. It's a great wall hanging. Three of these is a great table runner. Three of them done as three mini quilts. Makes a nice little arrangement on a wall. You know, maybe using some scraps from a seasonal quilt that you made and you can kind of round out the decor of a room. But what that means for sure is that you could make one block, baste it and quilt it and try out that bold look and see how you feel about it before you commit to a whole quilt, right? So that's definitely an option as well because then if you like it, then you also make a quilt and then you have like a table topper or a wall hanging that matches your quilt. This is a win, win, win. And if you don't like it, use as a placemat, use as a cat mat, donate it. There's options, right? Um, let's see. I know, right, Cindy? I have so enjoyed like being pushed out of my own comfort zone by summer stash busting because I've loved all these patterns so much. Um, I, I know. My whole life is these colors. I mean, like, like, tr like orange, mustard, and navy, like my whole life. A little bit of gray thrown in. I need a light neutral once in a while. You know, just color, just color coordinating. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me this morning. This has been so much fun, even with our technical glitches. I can't wait to share more of this block with you. It's okay, Ian, I'll fix it. Ian's very worried about the block Havana knocked off my design wall. So I'm gonna go help him with that. Don't forget to pop over to the blog to check that out. And don't forget if you have not already to download that free guide to get you started with free motion quilting. All right, rock stars, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.